fought long enough, Galadriel. Put up your sword. Without it, what am I to be? Hey everybody, I'm Gabby Isabel with DCTV and I am here with legendary artist John Howe and premier uh, vocal coach Leith McPherson who have been working on the latest Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power series which just premiered on Amazon Prime. Um, we are so excited to have you guys here. You guys are wonderful, wonderful um, assets to the Lord of the Rings fandom. Um, I would love to know, I heard that this is your first time at Dragon Con. So how are you enjoying the weekend so far? Has, have you seen anything new and interesting and crazy yet? Do you want to go back? I don't think we've had time to see anything. Um, but I, I love the positive energy in these events. I think that's what really warms my heart the most. Absolutely. I, I have wanted to come to a con for the longest time. And to come to this, one, when I found out that Dragon Con was actually run by volunteers, mm -hmm you know you are heading straight to your people. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, yep. right? You are, <laughs> you are just, and we walked into the lobby last night when we arrived, got off the plane from London, walked into the lobby and my blood pressure dropped, my shoulders dropped, and I just immediately thought, I am with my people. I have not felt so immediately safe in a new place maybe in my whole life it, it's oh. an absolute joy to be an absolute joy so. oh that's so wonderful to hear yeah and i could tell um from the panel that you guys just did that you have such passion and such eagerness and such joy i immediately connected with just how excited you got about the language of tolkien's world and um i i connected very much with what you said about the world being living art, basically. Um, so can you let us know uh, kind of when you were first pulled into the world that J.R.R. Tolkien wrote and, and how you come to, came to be part of it? Well, I, I was pulled in by, by small, small steps. Uh, I, had a, I, I read the books when I was around 12. I thought they were fun to read. And uh, when the calendars came out in the late 1970s, I suddenly realized, oh, you can draw pictures for these and get them published and so I I kept approaching the uh, Harper Collins or well, Harper Collins the ancestor of Harper Collins who who published the books and kept sending in work and they kept saying well that's very nice thank you for sending it in and that's all <laughs> and <clears throat> and then I I eventually got a, a commission to uh, to participate in a calendar and then eventually did a cover for the Lord of the Rings with this magician Gandalf walking in the rain and then one step led to another and uh, here we are wow that's wonderful how about you well i i've always been an auditory person my my first interaction with the world is always through these these things which aren't pointy but they are large mm -hmm. and um and so when when somebody who knew what i was interested in a friend as a teenager um said oh there was there's this guy who liked languages and he kind of put them in a book Okay, that's vague, but I'll begin. I went to the library and picked up The Silmarillion, oops, which <laughs> is a very dense book and not the easiest way into Middle Earth. So I, I abandoned that fairly swiftly and then started with an easier story, which is The Hobbit, which, which was a much better way. I should have done that first, but I, I was okay. I just stepped out of Bag End and into that world and haven't really looked back since so it's it does something that Orlando Bloom said to me when when we were working on the Hobbit together and he said you never really leave Middle Earth mm. and he's right it, it, it's always with you it just captures you yeah yeah so can I ask how many languages are featured in the new um, Rings of Power series mm, let me think so so season one we have two different types of Elvish, so Sindarin and Quenya. Yeah. Uh, and we have Dwarvish, which is also, well, Khuzdul, which is, mm, I'm clearly got a dry throat, I couldn't really say that well. <laughs> Khuzdul, there we go, uh, uh, which is Dwarvish. Um, and people will probably be familiar with black speech from the inscription on the One Ring, 
uh, and there are sort of offshoots and derivatives of black speech. So I would say that there are four um, that we experience in season one um, to greater or lesser degree. Some of those are open, freely spoken languages and some of them a bit secret, um, but those are the main ones that we look at. Oh, that's awesome. Now, what would you say is the most difficult language to wrap your tongue around? Gosh, well, I certainly know that when an orc has been in makeup since 3 a.m., has been covered in prosthetics all day and has false teeth in, probably orcish. <laughs> there are occasions where a set of false teeth will fly through the air as somebody is, is trying to really give it some, give it some gusto. That's probably quite a challenge for them, I think. I would think so too as well, yes. Um, John, uh, I know that as an artist, asking you if you have a favorite piece of art is like asking you if you have a favorite kid, but is there any part of Middle Earth that you just feel really drawn to that you enjoy um, conceptualizing in your art the most? Well, I mean, I, I, I love I love it all. I can't really say, and it, it's very hard to choose. Uh, I'm, I'm more interested by the places I haven't visited yet. I haven't had the opportunity to go and try and find out what they look like. So, so there, there's a certain, you know, eagerness to actually go and expand uh, this visual universe. And all, all I'm looking for is a good excuse to, to do that. So we'll see. I, I would love to go into the, the more deeper into the first stage. Okay. Yeah. I think that would be, you know, there's there's a scope in the first age mm -hmm. which is which is which is almost limitless. And the second age is, is, is epic in scope. The third age is, is a little is a little different. It's it's the magic is leaving Middle Earth and there's a sense of melancholy which I also appreciate. And uh, so all of these are, are incredibly attractive. So I I just tell me where to go and I'll I'll go. <laughs> Wonderful. So um, can you tell us what was the first piece of art that you illustrated for the world of Middle Earth? I, I bought uh, the Tolkien calendar in 1976 and went through it and did my own version of the art that was on the page for each month. Uh, thankfully none of that has survived. It's all gone, <laughs> and, uh, and and it was. I, I was t totally a fan. Simply at that point, a fan do drawing pictures, yep. and I was in my late teens, and uh, and just having fun and thinking, oh yeah, I, c I I can do a version of that, and then you know eventually you get involved in something a lot more important, mm -hmm. but uh, but I've done thousands and thousands of paintings and drawings now. And uh, it almost scares me to see the amount there actually is. And I did about 1,500 pieces of art for the first season of Rings of Power. Wow. I'm well into the 500s right now for the second season. I don't think that's a spoiler. But these, the, these universes demand a level of credibility and suspension of disbelief, which is very, very high. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to you, you, you want to utilize every opportunity and even the most humble object or prop can be a vehicle to help convey another glimpse of that culture. So none of this can be neglected. None of it can be just off the shelf. Mm -hmm. It all has to be drawn with that spirit in mind of that this 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 the this series of fictional cultures in in Middle Earth, which all have their own uh, their own identity, and it is it is primordial that we distinguish between them, that we be interested in them, and they feel real. So there's a practicality involved, which I really enjoy. Uh, you know, I want it to feel like it was possible within this world. There's an internal logic which needs to be respected, and uh, all of that is is part of this. It sounds like a huge process, but really, I just sit down and doodle stuff to put it simply. And we're so glad that you do, because as I said, the, the depth that you've brought to the world of Tolkien is just absolutely incredible. Um, now I have to ask, because you just have to ask, if you were tasked with destroying the One Ring, how would you have done it? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have phoned Eagle Air. Oh. <laughs> And, and and just be done with it, and let's let's get it over with. No, I mean seriously, uh, you know this. The Tolkien's universe is possesses a depth and a credibility of its own, yeah. which which carries us through, and and raises the bar yeah. for what we all do. 
and I'm sure Leith shares my, my thoughts on this, is that it's, it's just fiction, but it's talking about important things. Lord of the Rings is a vehicle for so many questions which are, you know, these eternal human questions which come back all of the time. And, uh, and you, want to, you want to help with that. You want to participate. You want to have your, 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 your little voice present in that multitude of voices. And uh, because it, it resonates with something that you feel deeply that you really would like to say. And, uh, you know, and, and that, is, that, that, that for me is the, important, the, the importance of trying to respect this universe mm -hmm. and, 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 get it, and get it right. Absolutely. I didn't, I, did, I didn't answer your question because I can't. <laughs> it's fair enough. Now, Leith, you. Oh boy, I've been sitting here thinking, well, eagles, but then they weren't that interesting. Anyway, um, I think it's a bit like putting together a television show as big as this. You can't do it without incredible friends and a common purpose. I think that's the only way to get anything this important done. Absolutely. Great answer. I want to thank you guys so much for making some time to sit with us and, and chat a little bit about um, your time here in the Rings of Power series. Um, before we close, Leith, can I impose upon you, would you mind speaking perhaps a little it's something? like I had something oh, yeah. What? <laughs> Yes, I, um, I put this together for our panel today, and uh, it's a little elvish blessing, which is particularly with the idea of the first season of The Rings of Power in mind. So here it is. Naikala Valinorio, Orta Koloiorio, Ahatar, Hatar, Lumi Umbeo, Aleria Se, Yestan en Vigna, which means. Well, I mean, you all know what it means, but um, for those who don't. May the light of Valinor lift the heart's burden, cast off the times of fear, let it go with a new beginning. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, and thank you both um, for joining us here with DCTV. We are just so, so glad that you made some time for us, and we hope that you enjoy the rest of your whirlwind trip here uh, to, to Dragon Con and that you see some awesome stuff while you're here. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, and don't forget to watch The Rings of Power on Amazon Prime. The first two episodes are out right now.